welcome to Sergio Dada. So today we have a very interesting case. Let me give you a brief history of this patient. So this is a patient for whom I did a total laparoscopic hysterectomy and the surgery was done almost 10 days back. Not 10 days, I would say 13. Today is day 13th or day maybe day 14th. Now since last 3-4 days, the patient is presenting to me with mild pain in the abdomen and nausea followed by vomiting. So this is what is very uh, evident that uh, this patient is having the symptoms suggestive of ileus. But before that, let me take the history from the patient. आपको कब से दिक्कत हो रहा है? कब से दर्द हो रहा है? दर्द हो रहा है ये हफ्ता हो गया है। एक हफ्ते से दर्द हो रहा है। और क्या होता है? होती थी माने अभी तो नटाउलेट, नवातोलो, दिन नहीं होता। Okay, so patient in his in her own language is telling. about the features of constipation and obstipation. This is what is very simple. And this is a diagnosed case of paralytic ileus. Now, what is the concept of paralytic ileus? Let me tell you. Post-operative or any reason, due to any reason, if there is loss of peristalsis, then that is known as paralytic ileus. Let me pause it. Now, what is paralytic ileus? Paralytic ileus is a dynamic obstruction. Now, what is a dynamic obstruction? Where you don't have any cause of, or you can say mechanical cause of obstruction. Now, what happens? Post stress. Now, what is the stress factor in her case? In this case, it is the surgery. Total laparoscopic hysterectomy has been done at least 10, 12 days ago. Now, usually this is evident on day four, day five, but let us try to understand. Now, post-operative, she developed progressive stress. Now, what is stress going to do? Stress is going to increase or stimulate the brain and there will be sympathetic surge. Now, whenever there is sympathetic surge, there will be masking of the parasympathetic system. And you know that parasympathetic system is going to control the peristalsis. So, when there is stress, the sympathetic shoot-up is there. And when there is sympathetic shoot-up, it is going to mask the parasympathetic system resulting in paralytic or a dynamic cause of obstruction now what is the classical mistake which people do in such cases people start using or doctors start using prokinetic drugs now try to understand prokinetic drugs act on the local motilin receptors so this is just like or this would be just like an example of flogging a tired horse now how the diagnosis has been made we did an ultrasound which showed gaseous distension of the bowel and then we also went for x-ray so this is a straight x-ray of this patient. Remember, this is a straight x-ray erect view. Now, what do you mean by erect view? Erect view means it is non-contrast. We have not given any contrast in this and that is what. Now, when we talk about the x-ray, now you could be suspecting, even I was suspecting that there could be an iatrogenic injury which might have caused peritonitis. But I will show the clinical scenario also. But try to understand if you want to see the or you want to find out the perit peritonitis due to ruptured viscera you will always have free gas now this is the left side which is showing you the fundic gas but can you see the right side there is no gas if there would have been gas it would have caused it to move up and there would be a silver streak that is that would be available here now if you see in this what is visible there is nothing in the large bowel so large bowel hue is not there why large bowel is not there because the obstruction is at the level of small intestine now this is what is very evident can you see the concentric rings how do you identify that this is a case of small intestinal obstruction remember small intestinal obstruction three cardinal features the first is paucity of gas in the rectum can you see there is no gas in the rectum the peripheral transverse colon is also not visible the second is you get a typical step ladder pattern can you see a typical step ladder pattern this is a step ladder pattern then multiple air fluid level can you see this air fluid level this is remember these are multiple air fluid level the rule is more than two air fluid level in such kind of clinical scenario this is indicative of intestinal obstruction one more rule is there students the gap between the two air fluid level can you see this gap this gap so if the gap in the height it is not evident in this because this is not a frank acute obstruction. This is a case of subacute. So if this height gap is more than 5 mm, then again it is evident of intestinal obstruction. Now how you need to identify that it is a small intestine? In small intestine, we have valvule coniventus or plicae circularis. So if you see, you get to see, you get to trace the concentric ring. This is what is very important. I'll show you how to trace this concentric ring. Can you see? These are all 
कंसेंट्रिक रिंग सो दिस इज वॉट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दिस कंसेंट्रिक रिंग और वेल्यूले कॉनिवेंटिस इज अ हॉल मार्क फीचर ऑफ स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन नो विच पार्ट ऑफ द स्मॉल इंटेस्टाइन इट इज इफ इट वुड हैव बिन डिओडनम इट वुड बी एविडेंट लाइक अ सी लूप हेयर नाउ रिमेंबर इट इज वेरी प्रोमिनेंट सी वेरी प्रोमिनेंट रिंग्स रिमेंबर द मोस्ट प्रोमिनेंट प्लेस वेयर यू विल फाइंड द रिंग्स इज द जेजुनम as you go towards the terminal ileum or as you go to the ileum the concentration decreases and remember the distal ileum or the terminal ileum is considered to be featureless and when you go to colon there will be interdigitating patterns so this is how you study the simple x ray of this patient now when we talk about this patient how to manage this patient remember conservative management we will go for decompression and if since this is having a, she is having a subacute intestinal obstruction we will not put a rails tube otherwise would have put a rails tube also to decompress the upper gi tract the next very important thing that we need to do is conservative management fluids potassium because potassium or electrolyte imbalance is the most important cause of you can say of paralytic ileus so hypokalemia this is what is again very 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 important and you will also go for the routine examination now there is a hypothetical scenario or hypothetical regimen which is known as catchpole regimen what is that adrenergic antagonist and cholinergic agonist this is what we go for we can also go for iv erythromycin but that is not available in in country like india or in remote cases even neostigmine is given but remember iv neostigmine is very 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 dangerous why it can cause a fatal bradycardia so three things to remember what is paralytic ileus there is no mechanical obstruction it is the stress associated what is the causes there are lot of causes surgery post surgical stress infection diabetes sepsis burns trauma everything can be associated with this what is the management it is conservative care so this was the crisp concept of paralytic ileus